Here is a little picture I drew quite some time ago when I thought this was Miss All Sunday and then come to find out that she in fact is the super sultry sexy Nico Robin. So um, certainly if you like pictures like this, uh, follow me on all the social networks. One Piece Chapter 180 Alabasta Animal Land Well hello my brothers and sisters of the nerd nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on just the action-packed, awesome, tantalizing tale uh, of One Piece. Our last chapter, of course, saw us with, um, you know, Luffy pretty handily being uh, be being defeated pretty handily by Crocodile and, uh, and being swallowed up by the sand. At the end of the chapter, though, um, as we can assume, Luffy would not die, being our, our pretty much our main character. Uh, it, it looked as if he was pulling himself out of that sand trap, that quicksand that he had been placed in, and uh, and and yelled out, "Meat!" You know, so that's how the chapter ended. That's where this one picks up, and uh, man, I tell you, this is really good stuff here, really good stuff, and we're going to dive right into it. So we see uh, Luffy, of course, you know, coming up out of the sand, and then we see in the next panel, we see like three or four arms holding him up, like pulling him out of the sand, and I thought, man, it's Nico Robin, Miss All Sunday, whatever the hell you want to call her. Um, came back for him for some reason. So we find out immediately that that is what helped to pull him out. And he's like, just, I mean, at the on the brink of death. I mean, he's on death's doorstep. And he's like, th th thank you. So she goes and she's just like, why is it that you fight? You know, what, what is it that you fight for under the name of D? So it has something to do with this whole Monkey D. Luffy deal, right? And and the whole Portagas D. Ace and the, um, uh, you know, Gold D. Roger. The, this whole Will of D. thing, it has something to do and it's intrigued her. So she asks him and he's just kind of like, Ugh, and she's just like, that's ah, no use anyway, uh, talking to you. So she goes and grabs his straw hat and kind of tosses it over towards him. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, better late than never, I guess, Pell the Falcon shows up and he's like, aha, I found you, you know? And she's... <laughs> She's like, listen, you don't even want to go. Your injuries are worse than you think. You don't even want to go there with that. Because he's like, where's the princess? What have you done with her? And she says, you might want to help this guy out over here. Because this this straw hat pirate is the one that actually brought saved your princess and brought her here. And then as she's walking away, she goes and she says, um, you know what? Alabarna, uh, she's on her way to Alabarna. And, um, you know, and, 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 that, and that's where she's going, blah, 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 this and that, you know. So, um, you know, to, to meet her certain doom. But, um, you know, he, she conveys that thought. And as she's walking away, she goes and hops on this thing called Acceligator. Like Accelerator. Nice play on word, words there, Oda. And, uh, and it's the second fastest animal in Alabasta. So she hops on this bad boy, and we presume she's going to go and fire herself off across the desert. The next little interaction that we get, and this I'm a little bit peeved about, because honestly, I know I've heard a lot about Oda doesn't kill any characters, and he's only killed a couple, and this and that, blah, 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 like main characters, okay? Now, but this shit's getting old, where characters just constantly keep getting brought back when we just saw them dead and gone, okay? We go and we see in the port of Nanohana, we go and we hear, we see the word bubble, I guess you should say, so it's like, supposed to be like we're hearing this coming, and all of a sudden we hear this, me, 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 and I'm like, mother, is this Igaram still really alive, you know? This guy was kind of useless as tits on a bull when he was alive, and, you know, really, I didn't miss him being gone, and the fact that we thought he was killed really kind of lent uh, some credibility to the whole struggle. Um, him and, of course, Princess Vivi going undercover and Baroque Works, and, and this sort of just this being, you know, an, an endgame type of deal, that Croc's not messing around, Baroque Works isn't, and that he was offed. So we find out that he is alive, he's in the port of Nanohana, and he's like, oh, those straw hat pirates must have made it there, I saw their ship in the harbor. So we don't really know exactly what his deal is or what important part he's going to play. And uh, listen, regardless of whether you agree or disagree with me, I personally think that it's a little bit weak to just constantly be resurrecting these background, second-rate characters um, that really weren't that interesting to begin with. I think that it takes away from some of the credibility of Princess Vivi and her struggle and her fight and her hatred towards Crocodile for, in fact, doing this to her country. And then, of course, um, you know, ordering one of his subordinates, Miss All Sunday, to actually take out and kill her protector since childhood. So I think it kind of, I, I really think that it sort of, it, it puts a damp and uh, a, a damper on that and it really does not have as much credibility. So just my two cents on that one. So the next portion of the uh, the chapter over here is um, the, the Straw Hats minus Luffy, uh, of course, are riding on uh, on this uh, this giant crab, you know, uh, Pincers they've named him, you know. 
and they get to the Sandora River because if you remember, they're traveling. They you know they started out here in the northwest at Rain Base, and they're traveling straight east to Alabarna, but they have to cross the Sandora River. Now the Sandora River is like thirty miles wide or something like that. They only had seven hours to get across. It shows us that it took them three hours to get to there. Now they got to cross this river. But Pincers, he don't like to swim, right? So. <laughs> then they go and, and in a funny uh, chopper goes and he's talking to him and he's like, yeah, but he likes dancing ladies or whatever. And Pincer's eyes come like up and around because, you know, they're like on those little poles almost for crabs to go and look at Nami. And they're like, you know, go ahead and dance, right? Dance for him. So, <laughs> so, so then they're like, it's working. It's working. You know, oh, Pincer's, he's walking on water. And the next thing you know, it's like, yeah, it's not working. He fell into the water. So it was kind of one of those supposed to be like those exaggerated things. Like all of a sudden he sees this hot dancing girl, right? Uh, and all of a sudden, he just has the ability to go and run or walk on water. So just a funny exchange. It's little things like that that I appreciate and that I like and keeps things lighthearted. Uh, so then they go in, and they're in the water and they're like, what are we going to do? We can't swim this thing, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, this giant fish appears, you know, behind them, comes, you know, comes up out of the water. And they're like, oh, it's this so-and-so salmon. And they're like, its favorite thing to eat is humans, is man, right? And they're like, yeah, you could have led with that, you know? All of a sudden, out of nowhere, man, it just reminds me of um, it reminds me of the the Jawas from Star Wars, but not the Jawas, um, the actually from the movie Spaceballs, uh, the little the little guys that were supposed to be impersonating the Jawas that worked for uh, for um, uh, what's his name? His name wasn't Yoda; it was yogurt. And um, and it's just they little ding 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 because I just see these it's those little kung fu juguns. I think it's pronounced juguns. And, uh, and they just come flying out, just, and I'll get on this thing, and we assume pummel it, knock it out, or kill it, I, I don't really know what they did, one of those three things, um, I'm assuming they probably just knocked it out though, or something, you know, and they come in there, and, and Chopper goes and relays to the, the Straw Hats, and is like, hey, listen, they said that they could, because if you remember, Luffy had helped them earlier, and we thought he was kind of dumb for doing so, because then they were like in his debt, and Chopper had to give them some of their food, like half of their food, to talk them out of like following him around, because they had that sort of like that, that ninja type spirit, where like, oh, you saved our lives, or, or are you, oh no, what, no, what it was is that he, when he beat one of them, uh, they then, be, when he beats them, they then have to become your disciple, you know, that's like, you're, you're the master. So at any rate, though, we wind up seeing how that came back and actually helped them because uh, Chopper goes and says, yeah, they couldn't let the disciples of their master, you know, be harmed or, or, or not, not get to their goal or what have you. And, uh, and you see Usopp, I, I think I'm pretty sure it's Usopp that says, we're not his disciples, you know, and uh, because it makes it sound like obviously they're all underneath Luffy's reign, you know, as some kind of king or, or, uh, or dictator. And, and they are, I mean, to some, to some extent, but, you know, it's kind of one of those like you don't want to ever feel like that. So anyway, so these little bastards help them, uh, of course, you know, get across the river because they're able to now go and, and float on this uh, on this this giant fish. And again, I don't know if they just sort of like, you know, beat the shit out of it a little bit and were like, hey, you're going to talk to an animal talk, like you're going to take them across the river. Or if they just use it as a flotation device and then just went and paddled their asses off to get across the river. Either way, we see a map afterwards and we see that they've crossed the Sandor River, which now took another hour. We now have three hours until the rebels and the Royal Guard, the Royal Army clash, and all shit hits the fan, and everything just goes to crap, right? And the, and the destruction of the country. So the last portion of the chapter is, it shows us, well, it shows us very briefly at the East Gate, of course, the king being tied up, King Cobra there, and then it shows us Alabarna's West Gate, which we know is, they know that the Straw Hats are coming from Rain Base for them, right? So we've got Mr. Two, Old Fruitcake himself, We've got uh, Mr. Four and Miss Merry Christmas, uh, you know, the the kind of, oh, great ape, great ape, and of course the, you know, oh, my back, and, you know, and then we've got Mr. One and Miss Doublefinger, which, you know, I pretty much think are kind of the badasses of the group. Anyway, they're all talking amongst themselves about how the Straw Hats are going to be there, and they need to, you know, what are they going to do to spring a trap on them, and they kind of, there's a little arguing amongst themselves about who's going to take them out, you know, because it's kind of like a, you know, oh, I'm stronger, no, I'm stronger, I'm better, my number's lower, I'm cooler, I got a bigger dick, whatever, right? So that's the whole idea behind it is that they're kind of arguing amongst themselves about who's going to, you know, take out the straw hats. The one thing that they all agree on, though, at the end of this particular chapter is that uh, Princess Vivi is to be killed. And they have a picture of her that's just kind of like ripped in half, you know, just to be sort of like that, that poetic, you know, sort of thing, you know, that um, it's just to show that, you know, Princess Vivi is going down no matter what. So... Um, all in all, I think it was a, a good chapter. The only thing that I didn't like was obviously what I talked about with Igaram coming back. And wh why don't you weigh in on that, brothers and sisters? That'll be our chapter question for, for this particular chapter. What do you think about, um, and, and you can just use broad general terms, because most of you have obviously caught up with the series, or just, you know, from what we've seen so far. You know, what do you think about this, even menial characters coming back and just kind of, you know, having a second and third and fourth live, so to speak? You know, you feel like they're cats, for Christ's sakes, you know? 
Uh, leave your answer to that question in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it or just for the hell of it, whatever you feel like uh, doing there. And, um, and then subscribe if you haven't done so already. We'll look forward to catching you in the next one, nation. As always, thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for watching, sharing, liking, commenting, subscribing, and spreading the word of the nation. Pooper doodles.